the International Space Station. We also just heard the core uh, speaking with Crew Dragon to expect a reconfiguration of C2V2. That stands for Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. It establishes bi-directional communications between Crew Dragon and the International Space Station. Now we pass through waypoint one, so we're about 10 minutes away from waypoint two. Once we approach waypoint two, then we will do a go no go pull for docking. So we're again around uh, 30 minutes away from docking here, uh, depending on the timeline, uh, how uh, when we are up, uh, reach each one of these points. But we're on our way to waypoint two, which will bring us about 20 meters in front of the space station. We moved right through waypoint one, right through the keep out sphere, that 200 meter uh, invisible line around the International Space Station that helps flight controllers monitor visiting spacecraft. But we will have to hold at waypoint two, that 20 meter mark. They'll conduct their final checks, repair, for arrival at the International Space Station. A very clear view from Crew Dragon. That looks incredible. <laughs> Again, this is a view looking at Dragon from station from the Node 2 forward port that Dragon will be docking to today. Station Station on Space Ground 2 in step 2 of 1.104. I've just commanded. On RPOP, reference frame to destination docking port, and I see RPOP not receiving Dragon 2 data. Copy all, Kate, we're checking. Flight teams in Mission Control Houston continuing to check that RPOP rendezvous proximity operations program. And station Houston 2, we're going to reset RPOP one more time for you, see if that works. They're resetting some of that data for Kate Rubens. A reminder, she is not commanding uh, any part of Dragon's arrival. She is monitoring it, though, and so looking for some of that data in that program. Again, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from the station. Once we reach waypoint two, the vehicle will focus on aligning its docking system with a docking adapter. So preparing for docking, uh, and there will be a go, no go pull prior to initiating that soft capture approach. Here's that same view we were looking at earlier, and you can see even how much closer Crew Dragon has gotten in just the short time since we last received it, having moved through Waypoint 1 since that time period. A little bit more about what Kate Rubens will be doing once Crew Dragon docks. Uh, as we mentioned, the Node 2 hatch is closed during the docking, the station side Node 2 hatch. Kate Rubens will check for a leak and then open it for access to the pressurized mating adapter 2. She'll also manually pressurize the vestibule. That's the area between the A-pass hatch, which is on the station side, and the crew dragon hatch. The A-pass hatch is what is currently exposed to the vacuum of space. It also has a docking target on it that allows Dragon to align itself with the port. 
Once that pressurization is complete, Kate Rubens will be able to open the A-pass hatch to let some air in. It's a slow process. She'll be opening a valve specifically on the A-pass hatch to let that air in. And we'll hold for thermal stabilization before we uh, do some leak checks in the vestibule. We wanna make sure that there aren't any fluctuating temperatures that are giving us misleading signals on what the pressure is in the vestibule. We'll conduct the leak check for that space between those two hatches. In the meantime, the crew is doffing and drying and stowing their suits during that thermal stabilization and leak check. They're stowing their equipment. Kate will open the A-pass hatch and remove the docking target. Almost two hours post-docking, these, these checks are taking place during that time. We will look for Dragon's hatch to be opened. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. C2V2 link reconfiguration is complete. The soft capture ring extension is also complete. We are planning to hold momentarily at waypoint two. At that point, we will be asking for your input on lighting conditions and your go to proceed. Do remember that your visors are not required to be down until our final approach. Okay, Dragon copies all, and uh, we'll be holding momentarily at waypoint two, and we will uh, give you a good lighting check at that point. So as you heard, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from station, and we will hold and do some checks, do a go, no go hold to ensure that we are okay to approach for docking. And we did hear confirmation that the soft capture ring is extended and ready for that docking. A few minutes ago, we heard them discussing C2V2 common communications for visiting vehicles. They said they would reconfigure that system and just got good confirmation that it has been reconfigured. That's those bi-directional communications between station and crew Dragon. Station Houston on two for Kate. We're still troubleshooting uh, the RPOP issue you're having, so we're coming on board on SSC 17 and we'll try to fix that. All right, you are welcome to SSC 17 and also SSC 4, the main RPOP computer. Copy all, we'll get it working. Mission Control Houston checking back in with Kate Rubens aboard the station who is working to monitor Crew Dragon's arrival. As we mentioned, she is not uh, commanding anything that Crew Dragon is doing and neither are the crew themselves. This is completely autonomous, but she is trying to monitor some of that data and so uh, team members in Mission Control Houston are going to try and reconfigure the RPOP system rendezvous and proximity operations program from the ground. You can see on your screen, again, this is a view from station from the node two port that Dragon will be docking to. You can see the sunlight hitting Dragon as it gets closer and closer. It's starting to get a little bit darker outside as well. That's because the International Space Station and Crew Dragon are approaching an orbital nighttime they are in daylight for 45 minutes and nighttime for 45 minutes. Circling the globe every 90 minutes, they're currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean.
you're looking at a live view of Mission Control Hawthorne here at SpaceX headquarters in California. And uh, if you notice, we have lost video temporarily of Crew Dragon as it's approaching the International Space Station, but that's really no surprise to us. It's something called a Tedris handover, tracking data and relay satellite system. Uh, teams on the ground are able to track when the Space Station and Crew Dragon will be moving in and out of these handover periods. And we expect to regain video communications with the Space Station very shortly. In the meantime, it continues, uh, Crew Dragon continues its approach to Waypoint 2. And we have those views back already. As you mentioned, Jesse, you can really see those four forward bulkhead thr thrusters the closer we get. Wow, and you can really see the detail on the International Space Station with how close we are. We're approaching Waypoint 2, which will be 20 meters in front of the station. That's why you could see it so close up in that last view. Azram. Station Houston on Space Ground 2. Kate. Station Houston 2. All right, Kate. SSC 17 is back up and running for you. We're working on four now. In addition, let us know when your review is complete and you are ready for docking. And I saw SSC working is giving me good range and range rate. Uh, now I've got another, our pop is not receiving Dragon 2 data from PCS message on 17. Okay. Copy that, Kate. We'll take a look. Thanks for the extra info. And we've now reached waypoint two, so we are holding this position. We're going to do so and go. I do have a good uh, Dragon Docking System view on SSC 17 for the Dragon Docking Streaming Monitor, and I have a good out of the window view, so I am comfortable and my review is complete. Copy all. Thank you. Great news from Kate Rubens. She has the data she's looking for and a great view of Crew Dragon out the window as well. So she's given her go for them to depart Waypoint 2 and move into the International Space Station. As a reminder, we moved directly through Waypoint 1, which put us directly in front of the docking port. You can see it right here. That's the Node 2 forward port where Dragon docked during Demo 1 and Demo 2. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The ground is go for approach two. At this point, please confirm that the lighting conditions are acceptable to proceed and let us know if you are go for approach two and docking. Okay, SpaceX, uh, this is Dragon on the big loop. Uh, so the lighting is actually getting worse. We do have a view of the IDA, but we do not have a view of the docking target. And Dragon, SpaceX, we copy, we are six minutes from sunset. Would you like to hold for those six minutes or do you feel comfortable proceeding? And SpaceX from Dragon, uh, we'll go ahead and hold for those six minutes if we can. We copy hold. Crew Dragon crew has opted to hold at Waypoint 2 for the time being so they can get some better views of the, uh, the docking port the docking target on that APAS hatch we were discussing that's on the International Space Station. So they can hold here and that will give them the opportunity for sunset to uh, come over both the International Space Station and Crew Dragon. There won't be any odd shadows and they should have better visibility. Of course, the crew themselves are not making this maneuver in toward the International Space Station. It is autonomous. Crew Dragon will be doing it by itself, but we want the crew to be able to see the docking target so that they can properly monitor uh, as the vehicle continues to make its approach to Node 2. And the ground is go for docking. 
but we are just waiting for us to get a little bit more light so that Dragon can actually see where it is going to autonomously dock, uh, see the target on uh, node two as it approaches so it can make that soft capture accurately. We're in another one of those satellite handovers we just discussed as well. We should get video communications. Oh, right there. Coming back and uh, as we mentioned, Dragon is holding at waypoint two. That's 20 meters away from the International Space Station. They are holding until we reach sunset and orbital nighttime for the spacecraft. Once that happens, they will uh, proceed in toward node two. It should take about five minutes. And as a reminder, Waypoint 2 is about 20 meters away from station. We are on the docking access, and Dragon will be aligning itself with that docking port. We're just holding for some sunlight. This hold continuing for another few minutes. Uh, the space station has crossed the Terminator line, the difference in day and nighttime on Earth. They are east of Hawaii right now in the Pacific Ocean, and they are waiting for the sun to set on orbit. Crew Dragon will be able to use its infrared camera to spot that docking target on the A-pass hatch on node two, and then they'll be able to proceed leaving Waypoint 2, making their five-minute journey, approximately, to docking. And I should correct what I mentioned earlier. Uh, they're waiting for the sun to go down so that they don't have any shadows, so that Dragon can uh, actually see clearly and locate, uh, align itself with that docking port. As a reminder, we had a confirmation that the soft capture ring extended. That'll be the first part of capture, the soft capture ring. There are also rotary spring dampers that will soften the contact once Dragon's soft capture ring comes in contact with the International Space Station. And then the ring will retract until sensors indicate it'll be time for hooks to drive. We're looking for 12 hooks, two different gangs of six, to firmly secure Dragon to the International Space Station. That entire process, from contact to hard capture, can take about 13 minutes. We'll be standing by the entire time to make sure all of that goes smoothly, but everything looking good right now for Crew Dragon, still holding about 20 meters away from the International Space Station. And it looks like we might be about a minute away from sunset. So we should be hearing that call that they're ready to proceed. Again, there's no rush. And there's also no need for the crew to fly Dragon. This is all happening autonomously. a few more seconds until sunset and you can see it did get quite a bit darker and that flash on the node 2 docking port coming from crew dragon the 
do like the crew to be able to see this docking, even though it's autonomous, that helps them monitor where they're at and take control if need be. However, all of Dragon's systems looking good and we're just standing by for that departure from waypoint two, 20 meters away from the International Space Station. We are currently go on the ground for docking, but we are waiting for the crew to confirm if they are ready. To we are waiting for the crew to confirm. Uh, from Dragon on the big loop. Uh, looks to us like uh, we've gone through sunset and we have, we'll get the lights strobing. We can see the target. And so we are going to proceed by zero down. Copy, you are go to proceed and visors are down. That's great to hear. We will be commanding the resume shortly. And as a reminder, once Dragon is inside, the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. And copies all. Station copies all, I'm ready. We've got confirmation that we have go from the crew. So they will be starting this procedure shortly. We'll start approaching that docking adapter that you see on your screen. Once we get close enough, we will do a soft capture, followed by the insertion of the pins for the hard capture. We also heard the core mentioned uh, once that we reach the crew hands off point that's the chop call we'll hear retreat and breakout are not permitted and that would be from the crew the vehicle can still abort if necessary but as we said everything continuing to look good for crew dragon ready to depart waypoint two and the final approach has begun crew dragon moving in toward the International Docking Adapter on Node 2. Kate Rubin standing by on the International Space Station, monitoring their approach. And this should only take approximately five minutes. So not too long. Their arrival at the International Space Station today will be coming about 27 and a half hours since their liftoff last night at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center in Florida aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. We are now about 15 meters away, just about three minutes from docking. Very slow, deliberate, steady movements for Crew Dragon making its way to the International Space Station. We'll be looking for soft capture first with the soft capture ring already extended. Once we have soft capture, the ring will retract and bring us into a hard capture that should take about 13 minutes for that entire process, firmly securing us to the International Space Station. And then we'll move into leak checks. And SpaceX from Dragon on the big loop, we show 10 meters. We've got good lighting, good visuals. Great to hear, we see 10 meters as well. Even though it looks very slow right now, both Dragon and the International Space Station are traveling about 17,500 miles an hour over Earth right now, both about 262 statute miles over the planet. We 
here just a few moments ago too that the crew had reached 10 meters away from the International Space Station so already halfway there from waypoint two. But only about a little over a minute from docking. You can see on those display panels the crew watching as they approach that node port two. And what you could see directly in the center of the docking adapter, that is the A-pass hatch. Um, once we do do a hard capture um, and do leak checks, that will be the first hatch that will open, followed by the dragon hatch. If you look closely in the center at the very bottom, chop. there was chop, crew hands off point standing by for contact. Dragon SpaceX, soft capture confirmed. Dragon copies, and we see the same. As you heard that call out, soft capture is now complete. Next will be hard capture. This is where the pins will insert themselves into that docking adapter and create a hard lock. And we had that soft capture at 8.01 p.m. Pacific Time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Crew Dragon and the International Space Station flying 262 statute miles over Idaho. Dragon SpaceX, soft capture ring retraction in progress. That call confirming just what we're looking to hear. The soft capture ring is retracting. We're looking for sensors to indicate it'll be time for hooks to drive, create that firm hold on Crew Dragon. So this can take several minutes, maybe about 10 to 13 minutes. Uh, but slow and steady wins the race. Crew Dragon is now at the International Space Station. This view over the shoulder of our commander and our pilot, Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. They are watching this all unfold via these three displays. Got some folks here watching as we confirm that soft capture there. Everybody's pretty excited. I'm getting really excited. I can't <laughs> wait. They're almost done. This is the home stretch. So once again, we had contact soft capture confirmed at the International Space Station for Crew Dragon at 8.01 p.m. Pacific Time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Both vehicles were flying 262 statute miles over Idaho. We're now in the soft capture ring retract period. We'll be looking for uh, that ring to retract fully. The sensors will indicate that we are ready to firmly connect with the International Space Station. That's called the hard capture. Um, and that means it'll be time after that to begin league checks, suit doffing or taking off their suits for the crew, eventually hatch opening. So all those steps might take a couple of hours, um, but we will be here for their first 
I can't say steps inside the space station for their first <laughs> floats inside the space station. <laughs> Station and Bucky complete sensor one and two are off. OFS timer is inserted. Dragon SpaceX ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. Okay, Dragon copies all, and we are opening our visors at this time. heard the soft capture ring retract is complete. And MCS stands for motion control system. We are handing off from the Russian thrusters to the US gyroscopes. The other voice you heard was that of NASA astronaut Kate Rubens monitoring the arrival of her four new crewmates inside Crew Dragon. Everything's still going smoothly. Okay. We're currently awaiting that hard capture to be complete. As we mentioned, it can take about 10 minutes. Confirmation, we are now on gyroscopes on the... Dragon End Station on the big loop, MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Dragon copies, good news. Dragon copies, thanks. Good news indeed. MCS, the motion control system configuration is complete. We have now moved to those gyroscopes instead of Russian thrusters, meaning the hard capture sequence has begun. are currently driving into place to give us that hard capture. Once we do have that hard capture, though, it will take some time uh, before we can open the hatches. Uh, they will perform some leak checks to make sure that it is safe to open both the A-pass hatch and the Dragon hatch. That could take up to about an hour after hard capture is complete. We were initially discussing, it uh, looked like we might have an 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific time docking, and we did have that contact and capture coming at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time, so very close, and that was even with uh, us holding for a little bit to allow the crew some better visibility. Hard capture sequence now underway, and we're standing by for that confirmation. I know the astronauts have to be loving looking at all of this data. <laughs> Tons of excitement. I know they've enjoyed their ride in Crew Dragon. They were having so much fun during the broadcast, <laughs> but I can only imagine their excitement to be at the International Space Station now. Now they're right there. Hard capture coming to a closure in a few minutes. 
Then they'll be able to start getting out of their suits again uh, that they put on just for this approach period. We've got confirmation that the first six hooks are complete and closed. Okay, let me know if you're go for one decimal four zero three monitoring tools tear down. Houston copies Kate will be ready shortly and we'll let you know. As I was mentioning, those first six hooks are now complete and closed. The next six are on their way to complete this hard capture. Through patiently waiting and watching and monitoring on their three display panels there. We also heard from Kate Rubens on the station side asking if uh, it was time for her to deconstruct her monitoring system where she's been watching the approach. Ground teams will let, their, let her know whenever they're ready for that. Again, hard capture is underway. Once hard capture is complete, they will perform some leak checks prior to opening up the A-pass hatch. Once the A-pass hatch is open, they'll perform uh, some more checks to make sure that it is okay to open the Dragon hatch. And in the meantime, Dragon SpaceX hard capture complete. Dragon copy. And there we heard the confirmation that hard capture is complete. Dragon is officially attached to the International Space Station <laughs> after arriving at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern time. 27 and a half journey 